Oh my bitches, hi guys, welcome to a brand new video. Today I'll be reacting to Riverdale Season 5, Episode 5. We are in the time jump. Uh, last week was the seven years um, since the graduation and like things were very awkward, very different. Veronica is married, Archie came back from war. Um, he got discharged, but it was like an honorable discharge or something. He got, you know, whatever. He got reassigned, I guess. Uh, Betty Kevin is an FBI trainee and she's being targeted by the trash bag killer. Uh, Jughead's got, he's a writer, but he's got, um, what's a, a work, a writer's block, writer's block. Um, so and he's a debt collector, there's lots of happening. Cheryl's quarantining in her house alone. Tony's pregnant. There are things happening. Kevin and Fangs are together. Things are happening. Um, so I'm very excited to see where this episode is going to take us. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into this episode. Let's go. Tony was queen of the serpents. As she should be. And I was a published writer. So why were we only talking about how the town of Riverdale had fallen? Probably because it was easier than the conversations that awaited us. I know, right? They're dragging it out. They're like, oh. So after you left me that voicemail. Oh my god, that's, they're already bug attention! I need to, we need to, we need to talk though, like properly talk. I don't know. On the night of your book launch, I assumed you didn't want to hear from me. Hello? That wasn't my intention. Sorry if it came off that way. Yeah, after Pop's retirement party, I have to get back to Quantico. Y'all yeah, ain't going anywhere. It's good to see you too, Jack. <laughs> Sorry. Even though it is a bit weird. Yeah, I know, right? Bit, bit awkward. Because we never spoke about the thing that happened. It's some rock in your finger. The last real relationship I was in was... Well, I was with you. Oh, really? <laughs> Sorry. Dub, I have to go back to my life. My husband... Your miserable life with your crap husband, trash husband. Veronica, honey, we know you're staying. Don't be shy. When they're all staying, like, don't be shy. But, like, they think they're going back, but they're not. It's funny. But, like, it's, this is not the vibe. Uh, you know, out and about at work. You know your sister. Okay, Polly, what the fuck have you been up to? I'm stressed. Really, Jughead's still gonna live in the bloody sex bunker? Can we fix this, please? Why does it have to be alone down there for? That I don't trust this shady ass sex bunker. You know who the fuck's been there. But we do we does he have to live there? Can't he like live in Archie's gym or something with Archie? Like some kind of something we can arrange something, right? Like we can do something, maybe. So, how did the Bughead reunion go? <laughs> Kevin! Why does Kevin want to know the tea? Because same. This is why me and him, we share the same brain cell, me and Kevin. Kevin and I. This is why he's my son, because we are on the same wavelength. He gets it from his dad. That's right. He gets it from his dad. How was the Bughead reunion? But doesn't Kevin ship Archie? I'm pretty sure he said that last season, right? Anyways. All of us can be happily shacked up with our high school sweethearts, Kev. Uh, FBI agent, high school drama teacher. Well, I'm technically not an agent yet. Oh, so he's written a story about them, or, you know, his high school experience, whatever, and he probably didn't paint the serpents in a very good light. Jughead, we should fix that, right? And, of course, he's not going to be that welcome, but they'll, uh, they'll find it in their hearts to, to give him a job, because that's who they are. The Vipers were the good guys. You've made a lot of enemies in this town. Oh, don't fuck with the serpents. Jughead, watch yourself. I mean, we're a skeleton crew here. Kevin. Look at the queen at her desk, Miss Topaz, as she should, as the queen. I'm so glad she's like the main character, you know? Like, I fucking waited, we have waited, and it's about time, and I'm gonna keep saying it, but I'm so happy for her, because she deserves the entire world, and like, she's just like running the place I stand. You're teaching drama, debate, biology, gym, and. Kikung. Sex ed. Oh, shit. Are we dead in the water? 
Not yet. And that's another nail in Riverdale's coffin. They're all gonna save the school. They're gonna join forces, all of them. They're gonna do that. That's why they all start working at the school, yeah? Maybe to help, 100%. Watch. But why does Jackhead look good in his glasses? I- Okay. One thing about me- Obviously, everyone knows I'm a weak bitch. Yes, correct. Yes, we, we understood. Yes, okay, thanks. And one thing that gets me weak is men in cute boys with glasses because they just look so fucking cute and I am weak. And it is what it is. So, if you see me simping, mind your business! Thank you. Also, can Jackhead work at Pops? Tabitha, come through. And the first rule of my diner is no running. Fair enough. Queen's gonna run her business. Oh, can we get Jack had a job, please? Tony Topaz. You lost, old man? Yes, I. Hey the fuck are you doing I here? Got this. How many students do you have? A hundred or so. What if I offer them all a scholarship to still involve? I don't trust none of you bitches, Hiram Lodge. I trust no one. Don't come in here in Tony's, like, you know, sanctuary and, like, try and bargain with her after all the shady shit you pulled. I see you, ho! Sorry, I will never love- I will always hate Hiram Lodge. It's a fact. I will always dislike this man. I will dislike him till the end of the earth. A world class educator and a big fat paycheck. Oh, interesting. Thanks, but no thanks. So we're playing hardball, huh? I guess so. Look at Tony standing up to Hiram. I stand a woman, and that her woman is Tony Topaz. Kevin and I would sneak peeks through that window, hoping you were shirtless. <laughs> Hello? Spying on. Ghoulies. Oh, yeah, because they're at Archie's house now. Isn't it funny how, like, it's kind of parallel, like she said. Because in the beginning of season one, Betty and Kevin would spy on Archie shirtless. <laughs> and now they're spying on the ghoulies. Do I... We'll, we'll see what happens with Archie. We'll see how this plays out. But, okay. I'm not tracks with every... I mean, I trained with the FBI. I may just take you up on them. You should know who's running the force. It's Reggie Mel. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Well, maybe Reggie can help me with my ghoulie problem. <laughs> I gotta do some recon first, but after that, we're going in. Okay, I mean, what you got to lose at this point? Like, you may as well. I've been thinking a lot about your offer, Trudy. Our American Excess card was declined. What the fuck happened? In fact, all of our credit cards were declined. Yeah, the same thing happened to me. But don't worry, I'll have it sorted by the time you get back to New York. Did Harm do that? I don't. Did. Did Chad do... Because, so, okay, do you remember how they were on a, a plane, uh, a helicopter, and it, like, crashed or some shit happened to them? There was a theory that maybe Chad sabotaged the helicopter. But is that too far-fetched? I don't know. It's Riverdale. Anything's possible. Like, I believe it. But, like, why is the credit cards... I'm feeling like it was Hiram, but it could be, could be Chad. I miss you, too. Bye. Miss Veronica, I fear you're being watched. Followed. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's go. Bring an old friend out of mothballs. <laughs> How high are you willing to jump? Fuck off. Let's say twenty grand for both. I'll take thirty. Great. Ladylike revolvers. Oh my god. Stop. You, you know this being Riverdale and all. <laughs> oh my! Fuck off, you trash. I, they, they get me, they got me last week, and I knew, so she's having PTSD, obviously, with the, but do you think the trash bag killer is going to actually come to Riverdale and be after her? Because I wouldn't be surprised, because we didn't, we had, they, he hasn't been, or she, they haven't been caught yet, but like, the trash bag, I'm, I'm dead, I'm dead. It's, oh what Holy the hell? You gave me a heart attack. You're the one pointing a gun at me. What are you Sorry. doing? What's she doing? It. I wasn't there for you. On the other side of the farm when you needed me most. Dead. Okay, we're making amends. I like also to say for it. prank calling you that year on Halloween. No, that was the best thing you ever did, Betty. Didn't up. mean what I said. If it's not too late, I'd like for us to be real sisters to each other. I like this. I think this will be a good idea. But, like, I don't know if I can trust Polly yet. I mean, she's been doing shady shit, but it's been seven years, so maybe she's not doing shady shit. But also, why is she coming back at 3 a.m.? You feel me? Like, why so late? Like, no judgments, but I'm just saying, like, it just, it's Riverdale, so, like, I'm a bit sketchy, you know? He's, uh, working up at nightclub. Uh, the Roving Eye. Oh. Like, this is a few nights a week. It is true? Okay, make a coin, girl. Good luck. 
Because I'm going to pop in and take a look around and judge your sister. Or me, for that matter. I mean, Ooh, can you get that that's true. Time? They're going to make their queen somehow. You see the morning paper, Alice? It's a hit piece. Hiram Lodge is trying to ruin my credibility in the eyes of the school board. Well, I'll lend it. Oh! Hiram needs to leave Tony! You've come up to everybody at this point, and you're gonna leave Tony Topaz alone. Also, low key, I love that Tony. Now that because Tony was the one who, who stayed in Riverdale, right, and she came back and she you know became Queen of the Serpents. She you know got the nightclub. Like she literally now has a relationship with everybody in the town. So there's all this history that we're getting to see. We're getting to see Tony and Alice, Tony and Harima, people we haven't seen interact before. So it's really really interesting to see her like relationships with everybody. So. Board member, if I have Hiram Lodge is trying to drag the Serpent Queen down to his level, he's gonna get himself bit. That's exactly right. Exactly right. To say something, you know, give a speech about Pop Tate. And since you're the world famous writer, yeah, yeah, I'd love that. Jacka needs to be more open. He's very shut off with everybody, and it makes me sad. Reggie, it's good to see you, bro. I appreciate. It. Okay, if we keep looking. It's the way I cannot trust anybody in this show. Nothing in here, but still. Like Reggie's this big mafia sure. man. I'm dead. Nah, there's some plan going on. He's done this on purpose. There's a plan. Is that Polly? Oh, see, she's with the ghoulies! Polly, honey! Honey, honey, we need to save her. And now that Archie's seen this, he's gonna have to go to Betty, human Betty, gonna have to team up and save Polly! I'm here for it! Let's go. What do you want with him? I'm fucking stressed. You know what? You know what's funny though? This is making me nervous. Tabitha, first of all, queen for like covering for Jughead. Like we stand. Um, but like, I know that Jughead's, you know, Jughead's story has the potential to get really dark. Cause like, debt collectors. Like, and I'm gonna reference One Tree Hill again. Do you remember in season four when Lucas made those deals with those bookies? And like, for the basketball game, and when he didn't come through, they like, you know, ran over Haley and stuff, and like, they do all this shit. So like, it's gonna get really dark, and they're very dangerous people, and he owes them a lot of money. This is gonna be very fucking interesting, and I'm not okay. Bye now. <laughs> Coin. <laughs> if you still want it, the waiter drops a bill. Oh, bless her soul. Okay. I know you've been working for my father, so let's skip the pleasantries. Fair enough. <laughs> I need to buy a car. Nothing flashy, just in good shape and with excellent guys. Who are you running from? I'm dead. Your husband? <laughs> Is that how you roll I'm not running from anyone, Reggie. I'm taking the path of least. You're sure you saw Polly? No doubt about it. Oh my god, now they're gonna have to go and get Polly and they're gonna go in this bloody risky mitt. We gotta save Polly. I knew there was some shady shit. She's not coming home at 3 a.m. for no reason. Like maybe she's lying to Alice. Alice has no idea. The way. You know what? I'm actually loving the 70 time jump. I know we're in halfway through the episode, but like. It's very mature and it's. I feel like the show is much more grounded than the other seasons, and I'm actually really loving it. Anyways, that was the end of my part reaction. We're going to get sidetracked for a sec. Um, if to check out my part two reaction, go click the link in the description box below, and I'll see you guys over there. Ciao for now. Bye, guys.